hey guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video and we are traveling today while i'm trying to make it back to my destination you guys are going to be working on learning advanced features in vim and in this video you're going to learn all about registers so you're going to learn how to use registers you're going to learn some very powerful features with it and it's something that i've been using in my career for quite some time, especially when I've been working with Vim. Now guys, before we tackle learning about registers in Vim, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that way you're aware whenever we upload to the channel. Also, don't forget to give me a like for the video. This video helps you out. And lastly, share the video with a family member or a friend so that way they can learn how to use registers in Vim. Or they can get introduced to some of my other content because there's a lot of great other things on the channel besides just learning about Vim. As we jump into this topic, I'm gonna to spend a little bit of time explaining what registers are. So hang in there with me, but I promise you, I will follow it up with some examples so that way you guys can actually see what you're learning. There's nothing worse than just hearing somebody talk about it and not show you any examples. At least that's what I always thought. So with all that guys, let me send you over to our Linux environment, and you're gonna learn all about using registers in Vim. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. Make sure you check out the description as we always update the description with all the latest and greatest information. So that way you're up to date on all the latest stuff. Even if you're interested in talking to me about an opportunity, there's a link in the description. Everything is there, so go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, so the last topic that I want to go over for today, and it's also under the advanced section for Vim, and that is registers. So what is registers and why are they important? So registers in Vim are storage locations where you can temporarily store text, which can then be retrieved and used later on. Now, when talking about registers, there are four types of registers. So the first register is called unnamed register. The second one is called named register. Now your third are called numbered registers and your fourth are called special registers. Well, how do we see the contents of these registers? In fact, actually, you can use the colon and you can use the reg command, so colon reg, and that actually brings up a window where you can actually see what's inside of your registers. And it even tells you right at the top, registers. So let's take a look at that first one that we see there and it's represented by double quotes or in reality, it's really supposed to be one double quote. So our single double quote, or what it looks like from your end might be two double quotes. That is what you called an unnamed register. That is the default register where you store stuff if you don't specify a register. So as an example, if we were to copy something and we don't specify what register we wanna copy it to, you guessed it, that is exactly the register that will be used. Now our next register is our named register. In named register, you can actually use lowercase a through z or uppercase a through z. And by the way, lowercase and uppercase have different functions. So in the example of lowercase, lowercase named registers, you typically overwrite what is inside of those registers. Or conversely, when you're using an uppercase named register, that one appends to the content that's already there. And we see our lowercase register all the way about eh, close to the bottom there. It looks like you have double quotes and an A. That is our named register and our first register, which is A. And so it has a value in there of int main void. So if we were to use that same register, our lowercase, we would actually overwrite that content with whatever's new. Now, conversely, if we were to use an uppercase A, we would append to it, meaning we would add. Now our number register is zero through nine. That actually holds our copied text or yank text, which is also the other name that is used for copy. And it's interesting because zero is very different from one through nine. So notice that zero, and in this case, zero has our print hello world, zero, is our most recently copied text. And that's exactly what zero does. It holds your most recently copied. Now numbered registered one through nine, that holds your most recently deleted text. 
And the last one that we'll talk about before we go into some examples are special registers. Now there's multiple special registers, but I'll talk about one in particular that I actually use, and that is your most recently used command registered, and that's represented by our colon. So if we saw here that we did a split, specifically a vertical split, there is our most recent command that we ran and it's held inside of that special register. All right guys, so we did a lot of talking, not a lot of doing, so let's go ahead and do some examples so that way we can tie it to exactly what we just talked about. So let's go ahead and look at our first example, which is working with unnamed registers. And remember, this one we use if we don't specify a register. So let's say we are copying something. If we don't specify a register, this is exactly where it's going. And that's, in this case, our double quotes. Or if we are looking at this register snapshot here, it is our two double quotes, which is the first one. And as you see here, it says printf hello world. Let's change that to something different. So let's hit enter to get out of here. Let's go ahead and copy this line over here that says void underscore print hello, open quotes, close quotes, and open brackets. So if we highlight the whole line and copy that, now that we've copied and we didn't specify a register, let's go back and view the register content and see that that was changed. Colon, reg, and what do you know? That first registered was changed to void print underscore hello, and it ends with that bracket opening. Let's try one more example. Let me copy this include that we have here on line three, which is include hello.h. Let's copy that. Let's take a look at our register by doing colon reg. And as you can see, that register was updated. And so if we close out of here, if I were to go to a different file, and let's say we're on line number eight for this hello.h header file, if we were to do a paste here, we're pasting the contents of that unnamed register. So let's go ahead and paste that. And as you can see, there it is. Now let's go ahead and delete that line number, number nine. So now that we've deleted that, let's take a look at the contents of the register. So colon reg. So I don't know if you noticed that, but when I told you to delete, you actually use what's called now our numbered register. And remember what I said earlier, our number register is specifically one through nine hold our most recently deleted text. All right, guys. So at this point, you've seen how you can utilize your unnamed register. And I showed you how to copy and paste, meaning store the text and utilize the text somewhere else. We've taken a look now at our numbered register and you saw how we deleted text in our numbered registered and it saved it there. So of course our first registered, which is zero, it is storing the value of our deleted text. Now let's go ahead and paste the contents of that register, which is our numbered zero registered. Let's put that into our file. How do we access that? Now I'm in this hello header and I'm on line number eight. And as we just saw, if we look under reg real quick in number zero register, we have that include.h. If I wanna use the contents of that register, all I have to do now is double quotes, the number of the register, which is zero, and then we use P for paste. And what do you know? We took the contents out of that numbered registered and we pasted it directly to this particular file. So that is really cool of how you can store text into that register and be able to access it at a later time and paste it into whatever file you're working in. So that is awesome. Now, it goes without saying that you can use the same thing in order to access the other registers. So let's take a look at another register. So if we do colon reg, now let's say we wanna take the text from previous things that we worked on and look at register number five. There is some text missing from this line. Let's use that. So let's go to the end of line number nine Let's go ahead and do double quotes, number five, which is our fifth numbered register and P for paste. And what do you know? There is the contents from that that says there is some text missing from this line. Now here's the interesting thing. I don't wanna keep this, so I'm going to delete the line, but I'm not gonna specify a register. So that's gonna go to our default register and you're gonna see that the register values are gonna be updated. So let's go ahead and delete this line Let's go look at the values of the registers by doing colon reg. And what do you know? There is the content that was updated and you see it with the double quotes, which is the first register. And it says there is some text missing from this line. 
And it's really cool of how you can see those registers that are being updated as you work. So at this point, I've showed you how to copy and paste from two different registers. So you've learned about unnamed registered, you've learned about numbered registers. Now let's go over named registers. How do they work? So let's head over to our hello.c and let's head over and copy line number five through nine, which is that whole entire print underscore hello definition. So if I were to do capital V for visual line, let's go all the way down to line number nine. Here we can do double quotes, A, Y. And what did we do there? The first letter, which is A, that stands for the register that we wanna put the contents into or the text into. And Y is for yank or copy. So if we go to our reg now and we take a look at colon reg and we take a look at the values of the register, well, you can take a look now that in our A register, we copied the whole definition. So now that we're back into the file, let's go into our hello.h, which is our header. And let's say we wanna take lines five through nine. And remember, we stored that in registered A. Let's take that whole paragraph and put it right here, starting with line eight in our hello.h header. And we do that by doing double quotes, A for the register and P for paste. And just like that, you were able to take all the contents that were in the hello C. And when I say all the contents, I'm talking about lines number five through nine. We stored that into register A. And then now we took register A and we pasted it into this particular header file which was all these lines from above. So it's really, really cool feature. Now, remember we spoke about the difference between lowercase and capital is that lowercase overwrites the contents while capital appends the contents. And let's take a look at example to see what we mean by that. Let's say I'm on line number five here in our hello.h header. And remember, if we look at our register A values again, so let's do colon reg, we can see that A has that void print hello well, let's copy line number five, which is print hello or print underscore hello. Let's do double quotes, register A and Y for yank or copy. Now let's take a look at the value of the register again. And you can see that A no longer has that long line, right? It doesn't have all that text anymore. It was replaced by our print hello. Interesting. Let's take a look now at an example with capital A. Now let's copy this define and that's line number three. So if we highlight it, with a capital V, double quotes, capital A, Y for yank, which is copy. Let's take a look at the value of the register by doing colon reg. Well, what do you know? If you look at register A, instead of using lowercase like I did before, I used capital in this instance. And all it did was it, instead of overwriting the register, it appended to the register, meaning it added that defined like we talked about earlier. So if we exit out of here and let's go all the way to the bottom here, Let's create another line. So on line 14, if we were to do double quotes, access register A now and do a paste, as you saw, because we had appended, we now carried over that void print underscore hello and also that define as well. So you just saw how named registers work and you saw the differences between a lowercase and an uppercase, which is really, really awesome. And again, if you master this stuff, you can become very effective when you're using this editor and working with it. All right, so let's clean this file up a little bit. I wanna to go to line number eight and let's go all the way to the bottom. Let's get rid of all this stuff. We wanna clean up some of the stuff that we were doing before. Let's take a look at our register values one last time. So colon reg. And the last one that I wanna show you is a special register. And that's the one where you can access previous commands. And you do that by looking at the colon register. Now there are other special registers and leave me a comment in the comments below and let me know what they do and what they're for. So as you saw, colon is a special register that holds previously used commands. If we were to undo the numbers that we have on this particular file, let's do colon set no number. We no longer can see the line numbers in this particular file. And guess what? Because we ran that command now, we can actually see that in the registers. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. So if we were to do colon reg, we can see that our command is saved in that special colon register, set no number. 
if we were to hit enter and get out of this, if I were to do control WW in order to switch windows, we can access that special register and rerun the command for all the windows very quickly. We do that by going into our command mode, so colon. Now we type in control R. Now that we have control R, we do colon and we hit enter. And just like that, we were able to run that quick command in that window. Let's go to the next window. Let's do the same thing. And just like that, you see the power of using that special register to run previously ran commands. And just like that, guys, you learned all about unnamed registers. You learned about named registered. You learned about numbered registers. And you also learned about special registers. Now, keep in mind, this was just a quick little breakdown. There's a lot more to cover. But it is your job now to go ahead and leave me a comment in the comments below with how do you use those other registers? And for those who are out there and use this a lot, tell me occasions of where they've helped you out most. Hey guys, welcome back. By now, you should have everything you need in order to be successful when working with registers in Vim. Now keep in mind, practice makes perfect. So I intend on you guys to go ahead and continue practicing because remember, it took me a while to figure out registers in Vim. I wasn't a pro. So I don't expect you guys to be a pro within your first one or two times of doing it. Now stay tuned to the channel as we're gonna continue uploading it with a lot of great information. But until then guys, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, go ahead and give me a like for the video if it helped you out and share the video with a family member or friend so that way they can be introduced to our channel and our great content that we produce here. Also too, don't forget to check out the description as it has all the latest and greatest information on there. All right, guys, I got to head out. I got to make it to my destination. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.